In theoretical physics, supergravity, supergravity theory, SUGRA for short, is a modern field theory that combines the principles of supersymmetry and general relativity where supersymmetry obeys locality, in contrast to non-gravitational supersymmetric theories such as the minimal supersymmetric standard model. Since the generators of supersymmetry use the Poincaré group to form a super-Poincaré algebra, gravity follows naturally from local supersymmetry. Gravitons Like any field theory of gravity, a supergravity theory contains a spin-2 field whose quantum is the graviton. Supersymmetry requires the graviton field to have a superpartner. This field has spin-3 halves and its quantum is the gravitino. The number of gravitino fields is equal to the number of supersymmetries. History. Gauge supersymmetry The first theory of local supersymmetry was proposed by Dick Arnowit and Pran Nath in 1975 and was called gauge supersymmetry. Supergravity The minimal version of four-dimensional supergravity was discovered in 1976 by Dan Friedman, Sergio Ferrara and Peter van Nieuwenhuizen, and it was quickly generalized to many different theories in various numbers of dimensions and involving additional n supersymmetries. Supergravity theories with n greater than 1 are usually referred to as extended supergravity some supergravity theories were shown to be related to certain higher dimensional supergravity theories via dimensional reduction e.g. n equals 1, 11 dimensional supergravity is dimensionally reduced on T7 to 4 dimensional, ungaged, n equals 8 supergravity. The resulting theories were sometimes referred to as Kaluza Klein theories, as Kaluza and Klein constructed in 1919 a five dimensional gravitational theory, that when dimensionally reduced on a circle, its four dimensional non massive modes describe electromagnetism coupled to gravity. <laughs> M sugra M sugra means minimal supergravity. The construction of a realistic model of particle interactions within the n equals 1 supergravity framework where supersymmetry breaks by a super Higgs mechanism carried out by Ali Chamsuddin, Richard Arnowit and Pran Nath in 1982. Collectively now known as minimal supergravity Grand Unification Theories M -sugra -gut, gravity mediates the breaking of SUSY through the existence of a hidden sector, M -sugra naturally generates the soft SUSY breaking terms which are a consequence of the super Higgs effect. Radiative breaking of electroweak symmetry through renormalization group equations RGEs follows as an immediate consequence. Due to its predictive power, requiring only four input parameters and a sign to determine the low-energy phenomenology from the scale of grand unification, its interest is a widely investigated model of particle physics 11d, the maximal SUGRA One of these supergravities, the eleven-dimensional theory, generated considerable excitement as the first potential candidate for the theory of everything. This excitement was built on four pillars, two of which have now been largely discredited. Werner Nam showed eleven dimensions as the largest number of dimensions consistent with a single graviton, and more dimensions will show particles with spins greater than two. However, if two of these dimensions are time-like, these problems are avoided in twelve dimensions. Itzhak Bars gives this emphasis. In 1981 Ed Witten showed 11 as the smallest number of dimensions big enough to contain the gauge groups of the standard model, namely SU for the strong interactions and SU times U for the electroweak interactions. Many techniques exist to embed the standard model gauge group in supergravity in any number of dimensions like the obligatory gauge symmetry in type 1 and heterotic string theories, and obtained in type 2 string theory by compactification on certain Calabi–Yau manifolds. The D. Brin's engineer gauge symmetries too. In 1978 Eugene Kremer, Bernard Julia and Joel Shirk found the classical action for an 11-dimensional supergravity theory. This remains today the only known classical 11-dimensional theory with local supersymmetry and no fields of spin higher than 2. 
Other eleven-dimensional theories known and quantum mechanically inequivalent reduce to the CJS theory when one imposes the classical equations of motion. However, in the mid-1980s Bernard de Witt and Hermann Nicolai found an alternate theory in d equals 11 supergravity with local SU invariance. While not manifestly Lorentz invariant, it is in many ways superior, because it dimensionally reduces to the four dimensional theory without recourse to the classical equations of motion. In 1980, Peter Freund and M. A. Rubin showed that compactification from 11 dimensions preserving all the SUSY generators could occur in two ways, leaving only four or seven macroscopic dimensions, the others compact. The noncompact dimensions have to form an anti de Sitter space. There are many possible compactifications, but the Freund-Rubin compactifications invariance under all of the supersymmetry transformations preserves the action. Finally, the first two results each appeared to establish eleven dimensions, the third result appeared to specify the theory, and the last result explained why the observed universe appears to be four-dimensional. Many of the details of the theory were fleshed out by Peter van Nieuwenhuizen, Sergio Ferrara and Daniel Z. Friedman. The end of the SUGRA era The initial excitement over eleven-dimensional supergravity soon waned, as various failings were discovered, and attempts to repair the model failed as well. Problems included The compact manifolds which were known at the time and which contained the standard model were not compatible with supersymmetry, and could not hold quarks or leptons. One suggestion was to replace the compact dimensions with the 7 sphere, with the symmetry group SO 8, or the squashed 7 sphere, with symmetry group SO 5 times SU 2. Until recently, the physical neutrinos seen in experiments were believed to be massless, and appeared to be left-handed, a phenomenon referred to as the chirality of the standard model. It was very difficult to construct a chiral fermion from a compactification. The compactified manifold needed to have singularities, but physics near singularities did not begin to be understood until the advent of orbifold conformal field theories in the late 1980s. Supergravity models generically result in an unrealistically large cosmological constant in four dimensions, and that constant is difficult to remove, and so require fine-tuning. This is still a problem today. Quantization of the theory led to quantum field theory gauge anomalies rendering the theory inconsistent. In the intervening years physicists have learned how to cancel these anomalies, some of these difficulties could be avoided by moving to a ten-dimensional theory involving superstrings. However, by moving to ten dimensions one loses the sense of uniqueness of the eleven-dimensional theory. The core breakthrough for the ten-dimensional theory, known as the first superstring revolution, was a demonstration by Michael B. Green, John H. Schwartz and David Gross that there are only three supergravity models in ten dimensions which have gauge symmetries and in which all of the gauge and gravitational anomalies cancel. These were theories built on the groups SO and E 8 times E eight display style e underscore eight times e underscore eight the direct product of two copies of e eight. Today we know that using de Brins for example, gauge symmetries can be introduced in other ten-dimensional theories as well. Topic: The second superstring revolution. Initial excitement about the ten-dimensional theories, and the string theories that provide their quantum completion, died by the end of the 1980s. There were too many Calabi Yaos to compactify on, many more than Yao had estimated, as he admitted in December 2005 at the 23rd International Solvay Conference in Physics. None quite gave the standard model, but it seemed as though one could get close with enough effort in many distinct ways. Plus no one understood the theory beyond the regime of applicability of string perturbation theory. There was a comparatively quiet period at the beginning of the 1990s, however, several important tools were developed. For example, it became apparent that the various superstring theories were related by «string dualities», some of which relate weak string coupling, perturbative, physics in one model with strong string coupling, non-perturbative, in another. Then the second superstring revolution occurred. Joseph Polchinski realized that obscure string theory objects, called d brins which he discovered six years earlier, equate to stringy versions of the p brins known in supergravity theories. String theory perturbation didn't restrict these p brins 
Thanks to supersymmetry, P. Brin's in supergravity gained understanding well beyond the limits of string theory. Armed with this new nonperturbative tool, Edward Witten and many others could show all of the perturbative string theories as descriptions of different states in a single theory that Witten named M theory. Furthermore, he argued that M theory's long wavelength limit, i.e., when the quantum wavelength associated to objects in the theory appear much larger than the size of the eleventh dimension, need eleven dimensional supergravity descriptors that fell out of favor with the first superstring revolution ten years earlier, accompanied by the two and five brins. Therefore, supergravity comes full circle and uses a common framework in understanding features of string theories, M theory, and their compactifications to lower spacetime dimensions. Topic: Relation to superstrings. The term "low energy limits" labels some ten-dimensional supergravity theories. These arise as the massless tree-level approximation of string theories. True effective field theories of string theories, rather than truncations, are rarely available. Due to string dualities, the conjectured eleven-dimensional M-theory is required to have eleven-dimensional supergravity as a low energy limit however this doesn't necessarily mean that string theory m theory is the only possible uv completion of supergravity supergravity research is useful independent of those relations topic 4dn equals 1 sugra before we move on to sugra proper let's recapitulate some important details about general relativity we have a 4D differentiable manifold M with a spin, 3, 1 principal bundle over it. This principal bundle represents the local Lorentz symmetry. In addition, we have a vector bundle T over the manifold with the fiber having four real dimensions and transforming as a vector under spin, 3, 1. We have an invertible linear map from the tangent bundle Tm to T. This map is the Vierbein. The local Lorentz symmetry has a gauge connection associated with it, the spin connection. The following discussion will be in superspace notation, as opposed to the component notation, which isn't manifestly covariant under SUSY. There are actually many different versions of SUGRA out there which are inequivalent in the sense that their actions and constraints upon the torsion tensor are different, but ultimately equivalent in that we can always perform a field redefinition of the supervirbanes and spin connection to get from one version to another. In 4dn equals 1 sugra, we have a 4, 4 real differentiable supermanifold M, i.e. we have 4 real bosonic dimensions and 4 real fermionic dimensions. As in the non-supersymmetric case, we have a spin, 3, 1 principal bundle over M we have an R4, 4 vector bundle T over M The fiber of T transforms under the local Lorentz group as follows, the 4 real bosonic dimensions transform as a vector and the 4 real fermionic dimensions transform as a Majorana spinor. This Majorana spinor can be re-expressed as a complex left-handed whale spinor and its complex conjugate right-handed whale spinor they're not independent of each other. We also have a spin connection as before. We will use the following conventions. The spatial both bosonic and fermionic indices will be indicated by m, n. The bosonic spatial indices will be indicated by μ, ν. The left-handed whale spatial indices by α, β, and the right-handed whale spatial indices by alpha display style dot alpha beta display style dot beta the indices for the fiber of t will follow a similar notation except that they will be hatted like this m caret alpha caret display style hat m hat alpha c van der werden notation for more details M equals mu alpha alpha display style m equals mu alpha dot alpha. The superverbine is denoted by e n m caret display style e underscore n caret hat m, and the spin connection by omega m caret n caret p display style omega underscore hat m hat n p the inverse superverbine is denoted by e m 
carrot n display style e underscore hat m carrot n the superverbine and spin connection are real in the sense that they satisfy the reality conditions e n m carrot x theta theta equals e n m caret x theta theta display style e underscore n caret hat m x overline theta theta caret asterisk equals e underscore n caret asterisk caret hat m caret asterisk x theta overline theta where mu equals mu display style mu caret asterisk equals mu alpha equals alpha display style alpha caret asterisk equals dot alpha and alpha equals alpha display style dot alpha caret asterisk equals alpha and omega x theta theta equals omega x theta theta display style omega x overline theta theta caret asterisk equals omega x theta overline theta the covariant derivative is defined as d m caret f equals e m caret n n f plus omega n f display style d underscore hat m f equals e underscore hat m caret n left partial underscore n f plus omega underscore n f right. The covariant exterior derivative as defined over supermanifolds needs to be supergraded. This means that every time we interchange two fermionic indices, we pick up a plus one sign factor instead of minus one. The presence or absence of R symmetries is optional, but if R symmetry exists, the integrand over the full superspace has to have an R charge of zero, and the integrand over chiral superspace has to have an R charge of two. A chiral superfield X is a superfield which satisfies d alpha caret x equals zero. Display style overline d underscore hat dot alpha x equals zero. In order for this constraint to be consistent, we require the integrability conditions that d alpha caret d beta caret equals c alpha caret beta caret gamma caret d gamma caret display style left overline d underscore hat dot alpha overline d underscore hat dot beta right equals c underscore hat dot alpha hat dot beta caret hat dot gamma overline d underscore hat dot gamma for some coefficient c Unlike nonsense gr, the torsion has to be non-zero, at least with respect to the fermionic directions. Already, even in flat superspace, d alpha caret e alpha caret plus d alpha caret e alpha caret does not equal zero. Display style d underscore hat alpha e underscore hat dot alpha plus overline d underscore hat dot alpha e underscore hat alpha n e q zero. In one version of SUGRA, but certainly not the only one, we have the following constraints upon the torsion tensor t alpha underscore caret beta underscore caret gamma underscore caret equals 0 
Display style t underscore hat underline alpha hat underline beta caret hat underline gamma equals zero. T alpha caret beta caret mu caret equals zero. Display style t underscore hat alpha hat beta caret hat mu equals zero. T alpha caret beta caret mu caret equals zero. Display style t underscore hat dot alpha hat dot beta caret hat mu equals zero. T alpha caret beta caret mu caret equals two i sigma alpha caret beta caret mu caret Display style t underscore hat alpha hat dot beta caret hat mu equals two i sigma underscore hat alpha hat dot beta caret hat mu t mu caret alpha underscore caret nu caret equals zero Display style t underscore hat mu hat underline alpha caret hat nu equals zero t mu caret nu caret rho caret equals zero. Display style t underscore hat mu hat nu caret hat rho equals zero. Here alpha underscore Display style underline alpha is a shorthand notation to mean the index runs over either the left or right whale spinors. The superdeterminant of the superverbine e display style left e right gives us the volume factor for m. Equivalently, we have the volume four four superform e mu caret equals zero e mu caret equals 3 e alpha caret equals 1 e alpha caret equals 2 e alpha caret equals 1 e alpha caret equals 2 display style e caret hat mu equals 0 wedge c d o t s wedge e caret hat mu equals 3 wedge e caret hat alpha equals 1 wedge e caret hat alpha equals 2 wedge e caret hat dot alpha equals 1 wedge e caret hat dot alpha equals 2 if we complexify the superdiffeomorphisms there is a gauge where e alpha caret mu equals 0 display style e underscore hat dot alpha caret mu equals 0 e alpha caret beta equals 0 display style e underscore hat dot alpha caret beta equals 0 and e alpha caret Beta equals delta alpha beta display style e underscore hat dot alpha caret dot beta equals delta underscore dot alpha caret dot beta. The resulting chiral superspace has the coordinates x and theta. R is a scalar valued chiral superfield derivable from the superfield banes and spin connection. If f is any superfield d two Minus eight R F display style left bar D carrot two eight R right F is always a chiral superfield. The action for a SUGRA theory with chiral superfields X is given by S equals D four 
x d 2 theta 2 e 3 8 d 2 minus 8 r e minus k x x 3 plus w x plus c c Display style s equals int d caret four x d caret two theta two math call e left frac three eight left bar d caret two eight r right e caret k bar x x three plus w x right plus c c, where k is the collar potential and w is the superpotential and e display style math call e is the chiral volume factor. Unlike the case for flat superspace, adding a constant to either the collar or superpotential is now physical. A constant shift to the collar potential changes the effective Planck constant, while a constant shift to the superpotential changes the effective cosmological constant. As the effective Planck constant now depends upon the value of the chiral superfield x, we need to rescale the supervirbanes a field redefinition to get a constant Planck constant. This is called the Einstein frame. n equals 8 supergravity in four dimensions n equals 8 supergravity is the most symmetric quantum field theory which involves gravity and a finite number of fields. It can be found from a dimensional reduction of 11d supergravity by making the size of 7 of the dimensions go to 0. It has eight supersymmetries which is the most any gravitational theory can have since there are eight half-steps between spin 2 and spin 2, a graviton has the highest spin in this theory which is a spin 2 particle. More supersymmetries would mean the particles would have superpartners with spins higher than 2. The only theories with spins higher than 2 which are consistent involve an infinite number of particles such as string theory and higher spin theories. Stephen Hawking in his A Brief History of Time speculated that this theory could be the theory of everything. However, in later years this was abandoned in favor of string theory. There has been renewed interest in the 21st century with the possibility that this theory may be finite. <laughs> Higher dimensional SUGRA Higher dimensional SUGRA is the higher dimensional, supersymmetric generalization of general relativity. Supergravity can be formulated in any number of dimensions up to 11. Higher dimensional SUGRA focuses upon supergravity in greater than four dimensions. The number of supercharges in a spinor depends on the dimension and the signature of spacetime. The supercharges occur in spinors. Thus the limit on the number of supercharges cannot be satisfied in a spacetime of arbitrary dimension. Some theoretical examples in which this is satisfied are 12-dimensional two-time theory 11-dimensional maximal SUGRA 10-dimensional SUGRA theories Type IIA SUGRA, n equals 1, 1 IIA SUGRA from 11-D SUGRA Type IIB SUGRA, n equals 2, 0 Type 1 gauged SUGRA, n equals 1, 0 9D SUGRA theories Maximal 9D SUGRA from 10D T duality n equals 1 gauged Sugrath supergravity theories that have attracted the most interest contain no spins higher than 2. This means, in particular, that they do not contain any fields that transform as symmetric tensors of rank higher than 2 under Lorentz transformations. The consistency of interacting higher spin field theories is, however, presently a field of very active interest. Topic see also topic Notes topic References topic Historical Nath, P. Arnowit, R. 1975. Generalized Super Gauge Symmetry as a New Framework for Unified Gauge Theories. Physics Letters B56 2, 177. Bibcode, 1975 PHLB, 56, 177 N. doi, 10.1016, 0370 2693 75 90297 X. 
Friedman, D. Z., Van Neuwenhuizen, P., Ferrara, S. 1976. Progress Toward a Theory of Supergravity. Physical Review. D13 12 3218 Bibcode 1976PHRVD.13-3214F. doi 10.1103/fisrb.13.3214. E. Kremer, B. Julia and J. Shirk, Supergravity Theory in Eleven Dimensions, Physics Letters B76 1978, pp. 409–412, scanned version Freund, P. Rubin, M. 1980. Dynamics of Dimensional Reduction. Physics Letters. B97 2, 233–235. Bibcode, 1980PHLB, .97, 233F. Doi 10.1016/0370-2693-80-905900-0. Ali H. Chamsadeen, R. Arnaut, Pran Nath, Locally Supersymmetric Grand Unification, Phys. Reverend Let, 49 to 970, 1982. Green, Michael B. Schwartz, John H. 1984. Anomaly cancellation in supersymmetric D equals 10 gauge theory and superstring theory. Physics Letters B 149 to 117 minus 122. Bibcode 1984 PHLB 117 G. Doi 10.1016/0370-2693-80-905900-0. Ali H. Chamsadeen, R. Arnaut, Pran Nath, Local Supersymmetric General Bernard DeWitt, 2002, Supergravity Nath, Prawn, Supersymmetry, Supergravity and Unification, Cambridge University Press, Cambridge, 2016, ISBN 0 521 19702 3. A Supersymmetry Primer, 1998, updated in 2006. Dries, Manuel, Godball, Rahini, and Roy, Probier, Theory and Phenomenology of Sparticles, World Scientific, Singapore 2005, ISBN 9-810-23739-1. Adil Bilal, Introduction to Supersymmetry 2001, Archive HEP TH, 0101055 A Comprehensive Introduction to Supersymmetry Friedman Brandt, Lectures on Supergravity 2002, Archive HEP TH, 0204035 An Introduction to Four-Dimensional N equals 1 Supergravity. Wesses, Julius, Bagger, Jonathan 1992. Supersymmetry and Supergravity. Princeton University Press. p. 260. ISBN 0-691-02530-4.